Hi, I'm Liz Parker, Senior Editor of Candy Industry, and today we are here with Joe Hodas, the CMO of Wana Brands. How are you today, Joe? Good, Liz. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Um, so to start out, can you tell me a little bit about Wana Brands and how it got its start? Sure. Wana Brands uh, is actually currently the, the largest uh, edibles manufacturer of THC-infused edibles uh, in North America. And we started in 2010 uh, here in Colorado, which is where I'm based currently. Um, and at that point, it was a medical-only cannabis market. Uh, and then, of course, the, as, as history will tell you, uh, Colorado voters in 2012 voted in adult use legalization that was then implemented uh, January of 2014. So at that point, we then became also a, an adult use manufacturer of, of edible uh, products. And we have since expanded into 14 states, Puerto Rico, and the majority of Canada. So we have uh, had pretty rapid growth over the last decade. Okay, that's great. Um, can you tell me how the company chooses like dose it or dose, sorry, doses, onset times, things like that for its gummies? Yeah, I can. Um, and you know, that's a big part of, uh, obviously who we are and what we do is the accuracy of our, uh, dosing, the efficiency and effectiveness of our products. Um, but I will tell you that a lot of it is dictated by, uh, regulation. So, uh, for example, here in Colorado and in most adult use legal states, uh, most products are regulated by uh, 10 milligram per piece dosage and no more than 100 milligrams uh, per package or container of product. So, uh, for most of our products, they're either 10 milligrams. So, we either have 10 or 20 per per to uh, increase the dosage. Uh, we have um, some gummies that are up to 50 milligrams per piece in medical markets. Now, what I'll tell you is, you know, since this is a, a candy industry um, uh, discussion, the interesting thing about gummies is we find them to be a very efficient and effective delivery mechanism for cannabis as, as a medicine or as a tool, uh, but it does have its limitations, right? Because the gummy being the size that it is, uh, the cannabinoids, the amount of THC or other, you know, CBD, CBN, CBG, other cannabinoids that you can fit into a gummy does have its limits when it comes to both flavor and, and texture and profile of the product. So, um, so we have found 50 is really, is really our max on a per gummy basis. Okay. Um, can you also speak about class specific terpene blends? I think that's how you say it. And cannabinoid, you kind of just talked about this, the cannab cannabinoid ratios. Yeah, that's a big, big part of, of who we are and how people identify us. So we have a number of different, what we call ratios. And, and by ratios, we mean THC being a, a primary ingredient. So that is one cannabinoid. And I'll kind of be you know pretty, pretty basic here to explain the, the science side of it from a layman's perspective, not from a science perspective. Um, you know, THC is, a, is, is the molecule uh, that most people are familiar with. Um, but there are, are uh, about 100 other cannabinoids in the plant, many of which have not been even um, understood or discovered yet. But CBN, CBG, CBD, CBD is probably the most com second most common um, cannabinoid. So when we talk about cannabinoids, that's how we look at it, it really is a molecule, right? So THC, again, being the most, uh, uh, I think, relevant one for a lot of people, because that's the one that gives you the euphoria that gets you high. But there's so many others that have a number of different properties, whether for relaxation, for pain, for anxiety. Uh, and so we take uh, these different cannabinoids and we put them together in different ratios uh, to create a product that has a desired effect. So, for example, we recently launched uh, our new Quick Calm product. And I think a lot of people think of um, cannabis companies as really being THC predominantly. And, and that is true for the most part. But our Quick Calm product, which I actually happen to have a, a little package sample of right here, but... Um, it actually has um, 10 milligrams CBG, 10 milligrams of CBD, and only one milligram of THC because this is a, a product in the formula that's meant to help with anxious feelings, spiraling thoughts, and the small dosage of THC combined with the other products as well as L-theanine, which is uh, an over-the-counter uh, 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 supplement that is found in green tea. Um, all of those combined in those particular ratios actually have a really great effect when it comes to helping to reduce that, that stress and anxiety level. So, um, so our ratio products have a variety of different ratios of, again, those, those different cannabinoids, THC, CBD, CBN, sometimes it's one to one, sometimes five to one. So we really formulate based on what we want the desired outcome to be. We then add to that usually a pretty uh, customized blend of 30 plus terpenes 
into each of our, um, we'll call them um, uh, class class products. So by class, I mean sativa, indica, or hybrid. Uh, and then we also have products that are meant, for example, for sleep. So our sleep product is pretty interesting in the fact that the 30 plus terpenes that we put in there, and I'll, I'll get to terpenes in a second and, and what those are, but the 30 plus terpenes we put in there are generated through, um, through AI, actually. We have a partner that gathers thousands of points of data uh, from cannabis uh, consumers as to what products they consume that help them the most with sleep. We then highlight the terpenes from those different products and put together that customized blend to help uh, with, with sleep. And terpenes are essentially the, um, the, the simplest way to put it would be the, the smell of different plants. And, and other plants besides cannabis have terpenes, of course. Um, you know, peppercorn has terpenes that are, that are uh, different than, let's say, uh, beta-carophyllene or other terpenes that you'll find in different vegetables and plants. Cannabis has a unique set of terpenes, and each one of them has um, potentially a, a different uh, effect in, on the user, which is why different strains of cannabis, when you um, smoke them you know, or, or consume them as an edible, have different effects for people. Is that too much science? Too much? Uh, too, no, too that's good. That? That's fine. Okay. Um, I was going to ask this, but you kind of already answered it. If you want to go a little more in depth, um, we were going to ask how can you share how you formulate products for specific use cases like sleeplessness or anxious feelings? And you did just, you did just kind of talk about like anxiety, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I have to be, you know, clear here, the, the science is not deep in cannabis yet, right? Because so much of the, of the science that I think people are used to when, when we talk about some of our products being formulated for a specific reason, um, we'll have people say, well, have you run, you know, clinical trials and, you know, it, no, because they don't exist right now. For, well, first of all, they don't exist because a lot of universities and other large institutions that would do that won't touch cannabis research because it's not federally legal yet. Um, but in addition to which, the, the it's interesting that the consumer side of this, the consumer demand and the anecdotal science is far outweighing the, um, the, the, the speed and the ability to do um, deeper research into it. So, um, so we are formulating products based on best knowledge, based on third-party research. So there, is, there are in-depth studies on different cannabinoids and what their potential properties are. Uh, and then we're formulating and doing our own uh, trials and studies with our own audiences to understand the effect and the impact. And then lastly, when we put it into market, you know, the consumer speaks, right? So our sleep product is, is one of our top selling products. And it's one of the top selling seed products in the country uh, in, in cannabis uh, uh, terms. So we know that it, it's working and it's effective for, for the consumer. Okay, great. Um, and then I was also going to ask you about any other new products, but you mentioned the Quick Calm. Um, it was released last month, I believe. Uh, actually about two two weeks ago, I think. Oh, okay. So pretty new. Yeah, yeah it's, rel it's relatively new, but it's already, uh, God, we got this, super emotional um, email from from uh, one of the bud tenders we work with at the store, bud tenders being the people that are at the dispensaries that help consumers figure out what products to buy. And she was talking about her dad, who is not a, a cannabis consumer, uh, who has uh, been under, undergoing cancer treatment and has tremors and is very uncomfortable, um, does not like to consume cannabis. She finally convinced him to try this quick calm product. The tremors went away. Uh, he said he felt like himself again. I mean, it was a long email and all of us who read it kind of, kind of got teared up. And so, you know, we, we know that, that these products um, are, are helping people and that's really what, why we do what we do. I mean, that's kind of our, our mission is to enhance people's lives. And um, in some cases it's because we make a great recreational product that people enjoy and have fun with. In other cases, because we have use case specific products that we think can, can really help uh, with specific issues. Okay. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, my last question is, how have you built a national brand amid varying state-to-state -state regulations or state-by-state -state regulations? Oh, man, it's tough. Um, <laughs> I was just having a conversation earlier today with somebody about the fact that we have, you know, every state has its own set of regulations, which means right. everything from what we can advertise and how we can advertise it to the products to the packaging can vary. So I have, uh, you know, this this container that I showed you, this packaging in Florida is black and white. There's no color. There's no none of the uh, the the vibrancy of this packaging in Florida because their regulations only allow for black and white and one logo. Uh, then I have a different um, set of issues in uh, uh, some of the states where, for example, L-theanine as an added ingredient, which is in that calm product, isn't allowed. 
So I can't put that product out in that market in the same formulation. So we have different SKUs, uh, in some cases, different packaging. Um, and, and so the consumer, um, I think that the benefit that the consumer has in terms of Lana is we have a recognizable logo and a recognizable brand. We've been doing this for a long time. So when consumers see Lana, they, they trust it. They don't have to make the visual identification and say, okay, that package looks different here than the one I saw in Colorado. Um, but for many brands and, and, and for us at times, it is hard to build a national presence when there's so much inconsistency on a market by market basis. That makes sense. Yep. I'm in Michigan. So I know it's, it's different per state. Well, Michigan, so Michigan is an interesting one for us too, because we had, um, Michigan was part of the reason why we've just redone all of our packaging. So we had, um, in Michigan, they didn't allow fruit on the packaging. So we had a completely oh. different, um, package in Michigan. And it's, and I didn't, I hated it as the, as the head of marketing, I, the, the, the packaging there pained me. I didn't like to look at it. Um, and so what we did is we, we, uh, actually just relaunched all of our packaging and in the cases where we had fruit, which is a normal CPG type of thing to do, right? We have fruit for flavors. We want people to understand, oh, this is, you know, strawberry, or this is mango. You put fruit in the package seems pretty obvious, right? Some states don't like that fruit in the packaging because, you know, they they feel somehow that fruit is going to be attractive to children. Mm. That's a whole separate issue. Um, but uh, anyway, so we we pulled all the fruit off. We have gone with more of this type of approach where it's gradients of color and different approaches to how we express uh, the flavor profile in, in a way that is um, appealing, but not uh, without fruit, right? So then we can have the same packaging in Michigan that we have in Colorado. So that's, in, we're in the process of that right now. We're going through every state and reintroducing and introducing our new packaging and, and working through the existing inventory in those markets. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, but thanks again for being here with us. My pleasure. Thanks for having me.